Chapter two, types of programs. This is an important one. This is where you learn what we mean when we say Montessori or Head Start. So here we go. Um, early childhood programs need to address a variety of needs of children outside their homes, including health and safety, um, services that meet their physical, social, emotional, intelligence, and language needs, incorporating educational and readiness programs, and activities that support children's abilities to learn and that prepare them for school. So preschool is preschool. Pre-kindergarten is pre-kindergarten. We need to remember that, that it is not developmentally appropriate to be teaching kids who are three years old what is appropriate for teaching kids that are five years old or six years old. And um, early childhood programs need to collaborate with families. We keep saying that over and over again, but it's very important. So what are the things that determine what type of program you have or that you work for or that your child is going to? Obviously, the ages of the children, right? Um, the philosophical, theoretical, and theological ideals. So what is the thinking behind the program? Is it a religious-based program? Is it a cultural-based program? Is it a program um, that doesn't have anything to do with those things? What's going to fit best for you as a teacher? What's going to fit best for you as a parent? What are the goals of the program? Are the goals of the program to teach the children academic skills? Are the goals of the program for the children to learn social emotional development? What are the goals of the program? Are the goals of the program for the kids to have a place to go when their parents need to go to work? What's the purpose? This is kind of like what the goals are, right? Um, what are the requirements of the sponsoring agency? What do you need to do as a parent or teacher to be involved with this program? What's the quality and training of the teaching staff? This varies um, obviously from place to place, from room to room within a, in a place, right? Um, where is it? What's it look like? Um, what's the culture around it? How is it financially stable? And what's the professionalism of the staff? So we know there are a lot of types of early childhood programs. There's part-time daycare, full-time daycare, parent co-ops. These are places where parents need to spend some time um, working at the center. Religious schools, those are churches who have preschools, although some churches have preschools that are not related to the church. They just rent from the church, so it's not a religious school. Um, preschools are private and public. Most preschools in our area are privately run preschools. Public preschools would be ones that are um, located within or run by the public school system. So um, a program like uh, Mother's Morning Out or Kinder Care, those are private, right? A public one would be early childhood. Okay. Head Start is also a public program, but it is not run by the school district. It's run by the actual regional planning commission, a part of the county, and it's a federal program. We'll talk about that a little bit but later. In-home care, before and after school care, crisis nursery and shelters, informal babysitting arrangements. When you drop your kids off at your neighbor's house on Tuesdays and she drops her kids off at your house on Thursdays. Um, lab schools. Lab schools are like on the university campus. Um, there is a preschool where children can go and people are learning how to be um, preschool teachers there. And then on-site child care. That would be places like the Caring Place is on-site child care for Carl. Okay. And then you can add into that things like Logic, which is a drop-in child care program. Um, or the Y, which provides all kinds of different child care. And um, it's changing all the time, what people need, what people want, how it works. Some of the things that you'll find in these child care programs are mixed age grouping. That means putting a bunch of different kids of different ages together or looping. Looping means that um, children stay with a teacher for several years, right? There are advantages and disadvantages to all of those things. Head Start is a federal program. It is run by the federal government, 
And it is a program that promotes school readiness through helping children who come from um, socioeconomic status where they may not have as much help as others. Um, you know, they may be disadvantaged financially, economically, um, can be in Head Start, right? And Head Start teachers have a minimum of a bachelor's degree in early childhood education or related field. It's run by the Department of Health and Human Services. Um, and it costs taxpayers an average of $8,000 per child annually. If you're paying for childcare, you know that $8,000 a year is not a lot of money, right? And what they have found over the years that is that children who go to Head Start have an advantage up to a certain point. What we don't know is that what would happen if those kids hadn't gone to Head Start, right? So Head Start is ideally a beautiful program that is so helpful for children and families. What it is in practice is maybe not what was intended. Head Start funding has been cut repeatedly over the years. Um, so we need more Head Start and we need Head Start for everybody, really. Um, I'll put some links to some good um, videos about Head Start. Early Head Start serves children birth to three plus prenatal women and migrant and generally Head Start is preschool, so it's three to five. Um, migrant and seasonal Head Start is for kids whose families move from place to place because they're working. And then there's also American Indian Alaska Native Head Start for children from those backgrounds. Does it work? It's been extensively researched over the past 50 plus years since it's a, pro, pro, a federal program. It's an important that it be effective. In 2010, research showed benefits for children who attended Head Start. At the end of first grade, children who attended Head Start at three and four did better in vocabulary, had more positive relationships with caregivers, less hyperactive behavior, more positive approaches to learning, increased dental hair, care, better health. By the end of third grade, there appears to be no significant remaining advantage. Now, what's interesting is if you think about what if you did in Head Start, if you did that from birth through third grade, what would be the lasting effect then, right? So we don't know that Head Start doesn't work. What we know is that Head Start does help kids get a Head Start. Um, parent involvement is required, um, and it shows in the way children, parents work with their children that it, that it helps for them to be involved. Head Start parents provided more support for language and learning. Head Start parents read more often to their children. Head Start parents invested more in their children and were more likely to use appropriate um, parenting styles, okay? So Head Start teaches children and families. How do we assess program quality? Well, to gain an overview of, oh, so why is it important? To gain an overview of children's progress. We want to assess children to see that they are making progress, that they are developing, that the curriculum is appropriate, that families are involved, that the financial structure of the program is working, that it fits into the community at large, and um, that the governing structure is working. So is the program meeting its goals? Where can we improve? And do we meet the standards of the accrediting agency? So many programs are not accredited. They are um, they meet DCFS guidelines, which doesn't cover really curriculum or the um, uh, success of the program. The DCFS guidelines cover whether you're providing a safe environment for children. There are a variety of assessment tools which can assess both the program and the children's outcomes. And that's there. <laughs>